Yay! What is up, everyone? <laughs> Welcome to Ginger Runner Live, episode number 202. And uh, we're getting up there. We're already up there. Yep, we're over it. Um, <laughs> I'm so excited about tonight's show because I get to share some race stories, finally, from my own experiences. Hooray! Uh, hooray! Uh, so tonight is going to be really fun because I'll, I'll get to kind of um, recap a bit of the Chuckanut 50K, which occurred this last weekend. Our mm. guest tonight is the race director of the Chuckanut 50K, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to her all about that. But also, the champion of the Gali Gong 160-kilometer uh, race, brand new uh, this year, Chrissy Mail will be joining us on the show tonight to talk all about that race, Chuckanut, uh, and everything ultra, and what it's like to travel across the globe and then put on a huge event and recover from that it's just it's craziness so really excited to have chrissy on the show tonight yes uh and i think that's pretty much it <laughs> i'm realizing <laughs> let's start let's it shall start. we uh so sit back relax everyone welcome to ginger runner live let's begin this. the show now ginger runner Yay! <laughs> uh, what is up, everyone? Welcome to Ginger Runner Live, episode number 202. And I'm realizing every time that these little name titles pop up, we get a little laggy. So the audio is there, but my mouth doesn't match the audio. And then all of a sudden, it clicks back. So I apologize about that. But welcome, everyone, to episode number 202 of Ginger Runner Live. I am, of course, your host, Ethan Newberry, and I am joined by... Kim Tachima Newberry. And you guys, as always, I will be keeping an eye on the chat room. So if you guys have questions for our guest, please ask them there. We'll be pulling the questions throughout the show. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I love about this show is that it is, in fact, live. and you get live. To, you get to interact with our yeah. guests. So if you have questions throughout tonight's episode, do not hesitate to jump into the chat room here on the YouTube page and uh, interact with us. The chat room is already a buzz. It's a buzz. It's a, a buzz. pumpin'. Uh, okay, so on tonight's show, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to talk about Chucking Up 50K, mm -hmm. which is uh, a race that I got to run this last Yay! weekend. And we get to talk with the race director of this event, Christy Mail, will be joining us on the show. Um, in addition to talking about Chucking Up, we're going to talk about her recent victory at the Gali Gong 160-kilometer race, about 100 miles uh, in China. And I cannot wait to hear what it's like to go from that, race home, <laughs> maybe sleep 10 minutes, and then put on the Chuckanut 50K, which is one of the most uh, popular races here in the Pacific Northwest. It's a Northwest yeah. classic. Been going on for 26 years now. Um, so, I, I, I mean, I can't imagine the amount of work that goes into that and the amount of sleeplessness that goes into it, too. Yes. Before we get into the show, of course, we have some individuals to thank. Those who support the show, the support the channel uh, every single month over and over and over again. Our Patreon supporters, of course, a big shout out to all of you. Uh, our top tier Patreon supporters, Chris Lee from Hong Kong, uh, also in charge of the Trailblazer Network there, uh, showcasing all of the fantastic trails in Hong Kong. Uh, Chris and his whole staff are putting on an event right now for Where Dreams Go to Die. They've been organizing this huge screening and stuff like that. So if you're in the Hong Kong area uh, within this week, I believe it's Friday or Saturday, um, they're doing a big screening of Where Dreams Go to Die, which is going to be really, really neat. But Chris and his whole team do some fantastic work for the trail running scene in Hong Kong. Brian Sands, longtime supporter on Patreon. Brian Sands has not only run his first marathon, he ran it on October 8th last year. He's training for his first ultra, and we just got to run with him at an Orcas Island trail camp up here in the yes. Northwest. And he basically ran his first trails that day or that weekend at that camp yeah the following weekend ran his first trail race and crushed it so brian it's been awesome to follow his journey and he's been a, a longtime supporter too and obviously in the chat room and i think he has a bit of sickness today so shout out to you brian feel better and finally rick bjarnison rick bjarnison out of uh british columbia he and his team at cheeky monkey media dot cd ca uh do fantastic web work they design websites and all sorts of stuff they did the uh ginger miss website if you remember that if you participated in the ginger miss run hunt in december they're also currently creating the gingerrunner.com redesign of the website i've already gone through a couple of uh rounds of like notes and stuff like that guys it looks legit like i'm so excited to have a legit website Yay. that i didn't like piece <laughs> together with my non-knowledge of code uh, so it's really nice to have a solid website, and that will be rolling out very soon. They are putting a lot of work into it, so it's going to be really, really great. So a big shout-out to those uh, three individuals. Thank you so much for the continued support. 
All right, what's the chat room saying? Are they ready to get on with this thing? Yeah, there's actually a lot of people in the chat room that uh, ran Chucknut this weekend. There were a lot of viewers and yeah. Patreon supporters who were at Chucknut. It was the coolest thing. And uh, Rod in the chat room says, tell Ethan he passed me in the last mile and he looked really strong. Way to go. <laughs> if there's one thing I've learned about Chucknut, by only running it <laughs> one and a half times, uh, was that you need to save something for the last 10 miles, really. And I did. And that the last 10 miles was like the best 10 miles ever. I felt great. I felt great the entire time. And it's a great way to pick people off. And I'm sorry if I picked you off in the last 10 miles. But it was not about you. It was about <laughs> me. Uh, and there's also a lot of people in the chat room that uh, have Christie's book and have been uh, learning all, all the good stuff from it. Also worth getting. Yes. Get Christie's book. Uh, speaking of Chrissy, our guest tonight, race director, author, ultra amazing ultra athlete, uh, global traveler and adventurer. Uh, it, it, it's my honor to introduce her to the show. Again, she's been on the show before, but uh, it's great to have her back on. Ladies and gentlemen, Chrissy Mayo. Yay! Welcome. How are you? Doing good. A little sleepy, but doing good. <laughs> <laughs> if you need to take a nap during the show, go for it. Yeah, I, I got pretty cozy on my couch here. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let's talk about that. I mean, when's the last time you slept? When's the last time that you had, like, a good night's sleep? I would say last night was a really good night's sleep. After okay. all done, yeah. Uh, before that, were you going on, like, a week plus of just travel and stress and all that sort of stuff? I'd call it going on fumes, yeah. Going on fumes, <laughs> uh <-huh>. yeah. <laughs> It actually, of all the weeks to be jet lagged and waking up at 427 every mo for three mornings in a row. Um, waking That's up specific at 427 of a time? Was, yeah, it was. It really was. I'd like lay there like, stay asleep, stay asleep, stay asleep. What time is it? 427. <laughs> Anyways, it's a good week to wake up early because you can get a lot done before the rest of the world wakes up. Mm -hmm. And that's that was kind of the, the good way to get the race organized. So... Just talking a little bit about uh, Chuck and Nut here. I was injured last year. You uh, invited me to the race last year, and I was so excited to run it because it's been the Pacific Northwest Classic. It was 25th year last year, and I was all excited. And like days before the event, I get injured running with Gary Robbins. Thank you, Gary. I know that you watched the show. Thank you for hey. ruining my Chuck and Nut. Um, but I remember <laughs> starting the event and just getting so excited about it, and I, I couldn't finish because of the injury. Uh, but the community was incredible, and there was no doubt that I needed to come back. So this year, I was very fortunate to be able to get back to Chuckanut and and my first ultra back after a year plus of injury and dealing with anxiety with racing and stuff like that. But I want to thank you, Chrissy, for putting on such a world class event, something that has that small town ultra feel because it's it's a community of ultra runners and the trail scene and the trail community here is incredible but it's also a world-class event you have the best aid stations like there was incredible course markings there was no doubt that everyone was going to have a great day and of course the weather thank you for having great weather <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly every single one of those things you listed off i can't take credit for it's such a community event and like i don't even know what happens up at those aid stations i don't know what happens at parking this <laughs> morning People just own this event. And I remember when I moved back here, it's almost, it's two years ago, but three Chuckanuts ago. Right. That first one, it was the, it's the low, it's our race. It's our 50K. The Bellingham, they had no idea that when they were talking to me that I was the race director. I'd be like, oh yeah, do you know the Chuckanut? Oh yeah, it's our local race. It's our, the community just owns it. It's such a cool thing to be a part of. And having done it for 16 years, I, Obviously, I take it on as my baby, and it's like it's a big deal for me. But I think more people have a connection to it than I'm even like able to be aware of. Sure. Uh, I mean, how many times have you raced it? Have you ever had the chance to race it? It was my first ultra in 2000, and then I ran it again in 2002, and that was the last year that Doug McKeever and Richard West were the race directors, and they said, you know, 10 years is good. We're handing it off, and there's something about that first love, right? And so I couldn't let it go away. And now, 16 years later, I keep 
putting it on. And actually, when I was cleaning my garage today and putting all the stuff away, yeah, I found this, and I just my mom made me put it on my shelf. It was the Chuck Gannett trophy. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I love I love the ha- is it like hand not handwritten but is it like hand engraved? No, no, it's handwritten. It's a uh. it's a it's a sticker, a white I- sticker. <laughs> On there, my friend Jeff Dean made it for it for me. <laughs> I love it. That is the best. <laughs> that I mean, that is testament to I mean, just how like how OG. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I I absolutely love it. We're, the awards this year were a little bit different, right? We had some nice pottery, and we have. It's kind of insane how much swag the sponsors bring to the table yeah and we this year we even as the group of race directors decided to not ask for as much like we just we need 12 awards for every age group and so we went after that and we still like we put together five raffle prizes that were over 500 dollars in value each and sold raffle tickets for our local girls on the run chapter we handed out i had all our volunteers get swagged out we had all age groups covered our sponsors and supporters are amazingly generous. Well, I, again, as th- this is a race that's going to be on my list every year. And I'm like, yeah. I didn't have to say much to convince Kim. She's like, uh, yeah, I want to run this. Uh, just getting a chance to see some of those trails. It's a, it's for those who maybe are watching or unfamiliar with the race. What I think really stands out about it. And I only learned this this weekend was it is great for road runners because it's got flat sections that are long and fast if you if you have the leg speed it also has some really good climbs and if you're strategic about it you either nail it or it destroys you and like can ruin your race you got to have like that right strategy and patience and and all that sort of stuff uh and also our dog is getting into <laughs> it happens every every week chrissy our dog loves to just start digging through oh well now he's laying down um but it requires a good amount of patience and strategy uh, to nail those climbs and descents and not ruin your legs for the final 10K, which is fairly flat and fast. It's, it's awesome. Go ahead, Kim. Oh, I was going to say, since we are talking about some of the specifics of the actual race, uh, John in the chat room who raced this year as well, John says, great race. Heard the previous course was faster, also based on previous times. How has the course changed? The course has mostly been the same uh, for uh, maybe like five years in there. We moved to a parking lot a mile down the inner urban. So you were more in the heart of Fairhaven. Mm-hmm. So there was a longer, the first and last now 10K was more like 6.7, 6.9 miles. So we took off some of the trail distance. Uh, we didn't have to go all the way down to uh, aid station one five being in that big parking lot, we moved that a station a little further north to right where the fragrance lake trail meets the inner urban. Mm-hmm. So you didn't do that little lollipop loop around the reservoir if that rings a bell even. Yep. Yeah. So we moved back. We moved everything north a little bit, but now that we're back at Fairhaven Park, we moved back south that same distance. But the middle has all been the same. Um, obviously the trails change and morph and Doug McKeever and I would both tell you that the ridge used to be like an animal path. And now it's a highway. It feels like for so many years of runners and bikers and wow. trail maintenance and all sorts of use that the path has definitely changed over the years. And I would say it's faster now. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, that was my first time along the ridge. There's of this beautiful ridge line that's in the trees, but on one edge is essentially cliffs because you're kind of up on on these giant rocks and stuff overlooking Mount Baker and just the incredible views. But th- I felt like that was my favorite part because the trail was probably the narrowest the trail gets on the entire course. And to hear you say that, I, like, I want to go back in time and see what <laughs> it was like as a goat path as opposed to, I mean, it's only a foot wide as a regular trail now, but if it was a thinner than that i can't even imagine weaving through that little ridge line up there it's pretty cool yeah yeah to be in something that long and i give it credit to where it's due doug mckeever marked that whole course and those signs that you see the encouraging great. The great humor all along the way that's like classic chuckana and the fact that that man still goes out there He's in his 70s, and he's getting ready. He's going to run the Orcus 100 next year. I just put it out there for you, Hell Doug. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, this man is still, like, crushing it. I'm, 
it's really cool to be associated with him. Uh, did you add more gain to Chin Scraper? Because someone told yes, me that. Like it, huh? <laughs> yeah, someone was like, oh man, Chin Scraper was longer. And I have no reference. I somebody told you it was like half a mile longer this year. Yeah, what did you like what that. did you do to Chin Scraper? I didn't do anything, but the mountain bike community. <laughs> I'm not even good at it. The mountain bike community does a lot of work in maintenance out there. The reason we have such good trails is the Whatcom Mountain Bike Associate or group. Um, yeah, so I give them total credit of making those trails. Like a lot of times, maybe where the distance is, is you have to add in switchbacks right. for erosion purposes, right? And also the bikes, their their route is a little different than the way a a runner or hiker might use it, but they are the big part of why we have such great trails up there. Well, I was, I mean, I knew you guys had great trails up there. I was blown away. I just thought that this race had such an awesome mix of fast, flat road that if you, if you nail, you can get some amazing speed, but if you do too much too soon, you can blow up your legs, <laughs> some really gnarly climbs, some good technical sections along that ridge and good, long, straight, beautiful, lush green trails that you can gain back some speed. Plus lakes. You're running around lakes and bridges. And um, yeah, I like beautiful course, beautiful race. Uh, so thank you, Chrissy, of course, for for putting on such a great event. And thank all of your volunteers. Uh, I know some of them might watch this. Um, they just did an incredible job of making sure everyone had a great time. They own it. it had like such a good community feel. I was just there spectating, but everybody was so kind and it felt like it definitely felt like the like a small uh yeah, small small town event. Yes. But it had like big heart. Right. Uh, I think is a yeah. simple way of putting great. it. Uh yeah. and of course having a shot of Jameson at mile thirteen, courtesy of I one of your about that. Yeah, I yeah, just... yeah, I don't think <laughs> yeah. Christy knows nothing about that. Oh, uh well, <laughs> I know something about it, and it was uh, water. it was water that was <laughs> yeah. had food coloring involved. Um, right. But yeah, you're like everyone took care of everyone out there, and it was uh, a blast. I think I'll leave it at that. Um, anyways, <laughs> thank you, Chrissy. Thank you, Chuck and our crew for an amazing event. It was nice to return to ultra running. It's awesome to have one under the belt. It's nice to say that the injuries are gone. Yeah. Uh, it uh, it was a wonderful experience. Moving and on. Lesson, Sorry. Well, no, not moving on yet, man. You Deal. totally like rocked that thing. Like <laughs> to learn the lessons from being out there before and apply the knowledge of how to run that course. I think big props to that. I I honestly got that from from your friends and your community that you you built up there who have run the race before. Again, this is another testament to the community. When I put out there, I'm running Chuck, and it's the first time I run it. Does anyone have any advice? And like hundreds of people come back with. Don't go out too fast on yeah. this one because the that front 10K will ruin you. And yeah. to save your quads for that final four-mile, three-mile descent down three, the road. Yeah, three miles. Yeah. Because you lose like 3,000 feet in three miles. it's It will destroy your quads for that last 10K. So, I mean, all these little pieces of advice allowed me to, to – uh, and also the signs that you mentioned. There's a sign that says run your own race, and it's at mile – three or four it's so early but mm. it's exactly where it needed to be because i was getting caught up with oh my god everyone's leaving me in the dust i need to keep up with you know that whole crew and and that sort of thing and i saw that sign it was just run your own race and it clicked me back into the no 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 you'll catch him later and sure okay. enough i went out there you won and i won yeah <laughs> uh, actually i do want to shout out uh cole watson patrick Smythe, patty o'leary uh top three males uh it was awesome to see them because I actually got to see them at one section where they, well, they were like 10 miles ahead of me, but and it was you, really neat. If you neat. guys are looking for like a fun race to spectate or even hang out at the finish line, there are a lot of fasties racing this race. Yeah. And it's really cool to see. And of course, Keely Henninger, Anna Marie. Say, speaking of speedies, that's the second fastest woman's time ever. Ever. Yeah, there, there I didn't get to like, see Keely because she was, was moving buzz so fast. Going on uh, about Keely that she she had the CR in, in mind. Yeah, how she was close too, wasn't she? At six minutes, Jody Adams Moore has a very very solid time on that course. And granted, that was on the course where we finished in the um, down in Fairhaven in down the parking in Fairhaven. lot. The men's record is on this exact course. It was okay. last year. Last, last year, year, Max, right? Yeah. And um, I mean, yeah, and that was on a muddy year too, which is crazy. Oh, that was like the worst mud we've had. In yeah, 
<laughs> so shout out to Keely for just and, like, crushing backsides when they came in. <laughs> yeah, right. Every, like it was <laughs> gross. I I remember a little bit of that. Uh, Anne Marie Madden and Gina Slaby. Yeah, Slaby is yeah. just a monster. And uh, we got to see Ellie Greenwood out there too. And yeah, I guess it was a great. nice race for third position there. Like they were going back and forth over the last mile or something. Yeah, it was great to see Ellie back. Yeah, uh, racing her first ultra since, yeah. since her injury. So shout out to all of those individuals. Long, 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 long time supporter of the Chuck and FFT. She's won things like five times. Yeah, which is yeah. awesome. So for her to come back when she's not her 100%, but wanting to be a part of the event, that meant a lot to me. Um, let's get to some maybe chat room questions uh, before we move into talking about uh, Gao Li Gong. I'm very excited to talk to Chrissy about her recent win. Yeah, there's a question in the chat room from Kim. Kim asks, uh, Chrissy, most memorable experience as an RD at Chuckanut? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. There's so many. <laughs> and every year, right? My mom and I actually tried to put together a book of the history, and we couldn't do it because we can't remember what year this one happened. <laughs> oh, on. yeah. But I think the most memorable stuff is the stuff that the runners probably don't see. It's like all the fires that the team Tyler and Kevin and I are putting out or previous race directors. I've had a lot of co-RDs uh, are putting out behind the scenes. One year, my parents' basement flooded the night, like at 10, 9 p.m. on Friday before checking it. I blew up my dad's truck one year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's so much like behind the scenes, crazy. I don't know. And those are the things that you kind of remember of, of how you pulled the race together. And, if, any, if anything I could say about this year is everything went so smoothly. Hmm. We just kept kind of looking at each other like, do we have everything? Or do, or <laughs> do we need to pinch yourself? There was a couple I had to send my uh, DJ. My boyfriend ran back and picked up some stuff that I'd forgotten. But I'm going to blame that on being jet lagged and tired. But mm -hmm. I think that's legit. Yeah. <laughs> this year when. I've, oh, I guess the way I was trying to announce it at the or not announce it, but. Um, show gratitude at the post-race party was that this was the true year of testing this race in terms of the machine that it has become 16 mm. years of putting this on and working with the community and organizing it I was half a brain let's be honest at this event this year and it's still it went even like maybe even better than if I was trying to orchestrate it like, <laughs> <laughs> oh so well because there's so many people that care so much about showing off their community and how great it is up here and the chills and it, that it, it just flowed even though the race director was like post hundred mile run. <laughs> right. I, I mean, I think that's testament to your, to your crew, you know, the, the, the people that you have up there that help put on this event. Um, I know that we're probably going to have people watching this that maybe don't get into chucking out or maybe doesn't work out with their racing schedule or training. Is there any way that people can get involved uh, at all to help in, in any capacity for future runnings of the event? I you mean, other than race weekend? Yeah. Or? Well, or like, can they volunteer? Can, where oh. can they go to volunteer or help out or any of that kind of stuff? On our website, we have on the checking at 50 K race.com website, there's a volunteer form and it's just a Google docs form. Kevin manages all the volunteers and it's, yeah, you could pick your time slot. We worked, we had a, like a kind of an email system going and this Google docs form is, awesome it gets everybody to sign the waiver ahead of time it just makes it just kind of streamlines things so sweet um yeah that's the best way to get involved volunteer we also do a um, pre-run of the course two weeks out so the middle 18k uh, eric sack from balanced athlete usually brings up a crew we've got the local um revolution running group and then aspire adventure running and it's about 30 to i think sometimes up to 70 people that come and run the course two week the middle 30k or yeah. yeah, middle 30K, uh, two weeks out. So there's other ways to like get out there and be on the course or experience part of checking it. Nice. That's awesome. So yeah, if anyone watching wants to participate, but without having to race the event, maybe you're looking at doing a first 50K or training for something or want just want to help out and see what it's all about, uh, I highly encourage you to do that. Now, this is what's crazy is that that week was not just Chrissy putting on the event. Chrissy had quite a busy... <laughs> 14 days, I'd say. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the event that, would you say? <laughs> Eight days. Eight days. So seven, even more one week dense. plus a day. So I, not even 14 days. Can you, can you set up the stage here uh, 
about the race in China. How did you find out about it? How did you choose to run this? And then in your brain, how did you try to balance this event with uh, your big race directing um, work that you have to do that following week? So tell us a little bit about the Gao Li Gong. The full story? <laughs> the We've got story. time. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I was invited to run the race the end of last summer. Okay. And to be honest, after Cascade Crest uh, two years ago, I kind of thought maybe that was my last 100 miler, to be honest. They're, these are hard to train for. They're hard to recover from. Mm -hmm. been doing it for 18 years. And you won that one, by the way. I want to point out that you won that one. Yeah. Hey, what a good note to go out on. My local 100 miler, Cascade right. Crest. Got invited to do this other one in China and didn't... Honestly, I did not understand the magnitude of this event, like signing up for and saying, uh, accepting the invitation. The reason I <laughs> accepted the invitation, this might be TMI, but <laughs> I wrote back to the race and said, I have done and had the opportunity to race the world and fill a passport on my own. And it's all very solo adventures. If you will support my boyfriend and I to come together, I'll come do it. And they, I honestly, like really, they were going to support that. They wrote back in 24 hours and said, yes. <laughs> and wow. So here I am now signed up to run a hundred miler the week before <laughs> the check-in at 50 K. Next step was to talk to Kevin and Tyler, the two co-RDs of check mm -hmm. And before mm -hmm. I could even finish the sentence, they were like, yeah, we got it. Like such confidence, awesome. such belief in the event and what we had. And not only that, we only used usually have like three to five, 300 to 350 participants. And last year with the 25th anniversary, we went to 500 mm -hmm. and they're like, yeah. And I, th we think we should just keep it at 500. So not only are they going to let me go for 10 days, less than, or, you know, two weeks out from the event, we're going to stay with a higher quant you know, re field size and everything. So it's just, everything was like falling into place well in advance of all of this. Wow. No, that's did, you, how... did you even talk to your boyfriend though? Like, oh, by the way, uh, you're yeah. going to China. <laughs> I, I forwarded the email to him and said, "Do you want to go to China?" <laughs> so, and we actually hadn't even been dating that long yet. So, it was a big, a big deal for us too. To I, I love that that maybe is like the first date. That would be amazing. Like, listen, <laughs> I don't normally do this, but yeah. you seem cool. You want to go to China? <laughs> <laughs> was he also going to race or was essentially like crew and helping and maybe pace? I don't know if they do pace. Yeah, his, he came as a, in a supporting role. Sweet. So eventually wanted or initially thought like to get him to pace, but it's a UTMB event, which I found out later. And those yeah. are not um, paceable events. Got it. So you now have this race on the calendar. It It's a hundred miler it's, and it's in a foreign country that involves a lot of travel and you know, stepping out of your comfort zone. I know that you've traveled the globe and done all sorts of adventures. Was this something that you had to prepare a long time for? Were you focused a lot on running the distance? Were you looking for a victory? Like what was kind of your, your mindset going into the event uh, in the months leading up to it? I started training October 1st, like wow. in okay. with, I wrote myself a training plan, very typical from my book, like following the building and recovery weeks and, I got myself up to 100 miles, three different training blocks leading up to that. And let me tell you, well, you guys live here now. You understand. The winters are rough. And I yeah. spent a lot of time outside. And honestly, it was one of the harder training focuses that I've ever had. I think having those end of summer 100 milers or long races, whatever you're training for, it's more about like getting out and adventuring and having fun and then, Oh, you get fit and you're ready to do a race. Right. And this right. was very focused training. And I, I'm really thankful for the community of girlfriends I have up here and people that I was able to reach out to, to join me on runs. I, my friend Gretchen, I was, t I texted her when I started a run and like two hours in, she texts back and says, yeah, I can join. So she came out like mid run, totally lifted my spirits um, Nicole, all the girls on the run, like, or not girls, excuse me, trail sisters, I would say got like really made a part of bringing some light to some pretty dark miles. I would say yeah. and my, my little PD pup joined me. Um, not all the time. I don't run her over 20 miles at a time. And she only does that once or twice a month, but 
she was out there for a lot of the consistency miles. It's as so, as a, a born North, Northwesterner and as someone who's moved back to the Northwest from California, where you have sunshine all all year round. I feel like there's something about training in the conditions that are up here every winter, and it's something knowing Gary Robbins and training a bit with with him or seeing his training and knowing a lot of Northwesterners. I feel like there's a level of grit. There's a level of determination that Northwesterners and there's other states and areas of the country and world where they have bad weather, all you know, seasonal yeah. bad weather and mm -hmm. stuff. I feel like that adds a layer of strength and determination. So I can only imagine those long days that you had out there contributed. Did you, oh. is Galigong have a weather component? Is there, is the season different or what, what were you expecting? I did actually didn't know. And actually when we left, we prepared for pretty cold weather. Like we got a full on down jacket and down pants for Deej. Cause we didn't know if he'd be standing around in 30 degree temps. Beijing right. was actually really chilly, but where the race was, was another got eight hour travel day to get to Tainchong, which is pretty South. It's close to the Burma border. Um, so a lot of influence from, um, like the South, um, more spicy food. And, uh, it was actually a really cool part of China that I hadn't experienced. I'd been to Shanghai and mm -hmm. Hangzhou and Beijing before, and Hong Kong. I, I know that's not China, but like in that kind of travels, but this was very, very far South, like deep in the country. So, mm. uh, which to your point made it a lot warmer. So we actually had perfect weather conditions. It was, that's good. I think the hottest it got was maybe 65, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Perfect. But we were up on the ridges, and so the people in the aid stations were getting cooked, but we were, as runners, pretty pretty ideal conditions. I ran in a tank top and shorts the entire race. I added gloves now and again, and then, you know, it's always coldest right before the sun comes up. I put on the airshed jacket right before sunrise for a couple hours, but that was it. Awesome. Uh, I want to, again, point out that we are live. Kim's been in the mm -hmm. chat room polling questions and <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, Kim, what do we got? Yeah, there's a question from Kimasabi75. Chrissy, how was it to manage your food intake in China before the race? Kimasabi says Asian cuisine can get yeah. pretty adventurous. Yeah, really curious <laughs> about this question. It's, I just want to know, yeah, nutrition, how did you deal with the buildup and did you have any issues? Luckily, no, but we were very cautious as well. Um, mostly water has been my like nemesis in the years, so we were really careful to drink bottled water we even brushed our teeth with bottled water even though we're staying in nice hotels and stuff we just kind of ex need that and then also just traveling there we took precaution like extra vitamins and emergencies and things to not get sick on the plane i think plane travel mm -hmm. actually like you're right before your race you're like peak peak trained ready to go you're walking that borderline of health so travel is a hard one on that but the food part um Early, early on in ultra running, when I was the Montreal girl and traveling around and selling shoes, I learned that you just you have to eat, you have to have calories, and so I never got super specific on having to have a my special pre race meal. So that's been probably one of the most helpful things in doing the races that I've chosen to do, like traveling all over, is being able to just focus on consuming calories. Yeah. What is it like? My pre race dinner, honestly, because we started at eight p.m. I had a bigger lunch, but then I was eating trail butter and graham crackers and dates. That was my pre-race, like, like 6 p.m. Classic. <laughs> yeah. okay, what's gonna, it's calories. I needed calories. And right. I didn't know if another um, rice Chinese food dinner was going to be the right thing right before the race, but I could count on like trail butter and graham crackers like <laughs> to get me through. Yeah, it's calories that your body's probably used to processing or to some degree and keep it as, as clean as e and easy as possible. Uh, can you talk about the aid station food? Uh, yeah, the aid station stuff. The, there was three main, there were 16 checkpoints, three main like full stocked Robinson flat type aid stations <laughs> uh, where they had noodles and congee and their sport gels had coffee gin ginger tea was my go-to man if hmm. i could find it over here um cola uh, all sorts of beverages the room so that was 6 12 and 15 where they had like the main stash of food and stuff the other checkpoints were pretty bare bones and i actually okay. 
um, usually I don't go through all of my food that I carry. I plan the hours out and have, you know, blocks and trail butter and bars and ginger chews and stuff like that. And I went through everything, um, on wow. this race because what was in those aid stations just wasn't appetizing to me. It was soda crackers, nuts, raisins, chocolate, yeah. <laughs> that's what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I was pretty dependent on my own race food that I'm, I still typically yeah, carry. I, I guess it's like, it's something that I haven't experienced yet because I haven't raced internationally other than Canada, mm -hmm. which doesn't really count because it's Canada. <laughs> uh, it's very nice. They apologize if they don't have something uh, that you want. We're sorry. <laughs> See, already. Um, <laughs> But I, I can only imagine that you get into an aid station and it's just unfamiliar food probably to start with. Uh, so, yeah, did you pack all like trail butter and all that stuff? Did you pack enough to last not only the race, but for like you said, you had to have dinner and you this sort of thing. Did you pack like a extra amount knowing that you'd have to go through all of it? We had a bunch of that. Okay. With us. We actually still brought stuff home. We we really enjoyed the cuisine. Like um, Basque Footwear hosted us. The Chinese distributor brought us over and just made it really easy traveling over there and watched out for those kind of concerns, but also gave us the opportunity to really experience Chinese food. We had Peking duck and Wow. I like I like adventurous eat. I'm not like a I'm not tied to my certain things. Like I like to try a lot of different stuff so that doesn't make it too scary yeah and i mean you're a world traveler you've traveled like you said uh, over china uh, a number of times so i can imagine that you're you're adventurous with the food because you've probably had a chance to experience it multiple times throughout your your adventures um i'm really I've, curious sorry go ahead <laughs> i've paid for it too though <laughs> <laughs> you didn't pay for it during this race i'm assuming That's a, thankfully yeah. no. all right <laughs> um i guess i'm really curious about the course itself so you've run some of the biggest events in the world. This is not your first 100 miler by any means. How does it compare to other events? It's the first year running of this event. Uh, UTMB puts it on. But what what did you expect and what was it like in person? Oh, I try not to have expectations because it just kind of sets you up. Sure. Um, and there was no way I was going to see the course ahead of time. The profile was very intimidating. So looking at the the scale of the profile that got me out like that would motivated a lot of those hundred mile training weeks and repeats on pine and cedar trail and, um, burnout road and all that. Um, getting there, the, the elevation profile only had it between maybe 1500 feet. And I think the highest we got was 9,000 and that was okay. kind of mid race. So not super high. One guy got over 10,000 meters, so over 30,000 feet of elevation gain. Wow. The profile said that it was closer to 27,000. What made it like different than any of the big races that typically that have that like over 25,000, you know, Hard Rock, UTMB, those climbs are long and descents are long. You can descend for over an hour on some of those routes. Wow. This one was more like running in the Chuckanut Foothills, so my training was very dialed unknowingly where you, you're not going to climb much more than a half an hour at a time. Okay. Mm. And some of the trails were so short and steep, like little hands on knees or like climbing using your hands a little bit and then steep, steep down as well at quick. So mm. there wasn't a lot of rhythm. And I, that was really challenging for me is not being able to get into like a power hiking rhythm or just, just open up your stride and descend for a while. There were sections like that, but the over, I would say the overarching feel of the trail was just constantly changing and new, a lot of new cut trails. So really soft and duffy. Hmm. Um, I'm glad a lot of the, cause you start at 8 PM. So the first, you know, 12 hours in the dark, some of those trails, I'm glad I couldn't see where I was cause it felt really steep and exposed. And I don't oh, know wow. if I, I didn't know what was, if I went wrong, what would, I didn't want to know what would have gone <laughs> As you came into the daylight, did that reveal itself at all? Like, was as did you as the sun came up? Did you realize, oh yeah, there's some some serious uh, exposure here? Um, yes, and and the trail went through a totally different region or um, type of terrain at that point. I would say it was like a big circle, but with a tail on it. And they had two other events tied to this race. There's over two thousand right. um, runners uh, split wow. amongst these three races. 
which shows the boom of trail running in China. Mm-hmm. I was there two years ago and I just felt this hunger. I gave a couple of different talks and the translator was just back and forth with me because there's so much, it's so new to like, to the people that are getting into it in China. And this time being there, I felt like there was more stories, like they'd run their races and now mm-hmm. they were they were curious on a different level. It wasn't so new. It was now, how do I get better? Or what else can I do? What clothing do I need? What eating options? So it's shifted just in that short amount of time. Hmm. And then the numbers, like the numbers at that race were, were pretty big. But anyway, so the courses were variations of that. The MGU is what they called it. Did the full Mount Gaoli Gong ultra with the little tail. RCE did the, just the loop. And then the THT, the T horse trail did a shorter version of that big loop. So you went through t- completely different regions with the mountains and then being closer to the, the city on the front and tail end of it. Got it. Let's get to some, uh, some live questions. We have a lot of live questions that have been pouring in. So yeah, a question from Ben in the chat room, uh, Chrissy, was there a large share of international athletes? It felt like it definitely, they had a great group of elites. We got to meet some really cool people from, from all over. We kept us in all in a host host hotel, got to share meals, total family style meals, um, and get to share stories that way. Um, at the actual race, I mean, it was definitely dominated by the Chinese. It was our home race, Mm -hmm. but um, yeah, good influence from Hong Kong and Britain and few people from the States. Um, there was a woman from Cambodia like um nepal some yeah really cool flair i would say added to it nice every and- finisher every finisher got to finish with their home flag so i wasn't just the wow. winner that got to carry. every finisher had the flag handed to them before they made the final lap around the um the finish shoot or finish area yeah, that's pretty awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and one thing I also loved, and you mentioned this when we saw each other over the weekend, was just the pomp and circumstance that they had. Like, just the pictures, and one of the pictures is used uh, from Christy's profile here, but it's used as the thumbnail for this uh, live show. Talk about, like, light show and fireworks. Literally. It, it, crazy. Orchestrated. It was so awesome having DJ on the finish area mm-hmm. because I, they had like a trail escort with me. The, you weren't allowed a pacer, but then they had somebody follow, run with me the last four miles. Two big climbs in the last four miles, by the way. I was like, no gratuitous, like happy cruisy finish. Like you were freaking climbing <laughs> like a point. You know, you have to boot, go up Roby Point for like a mile at the end of Western Sea. That right. kind of a, ugh. Um, had a, escort runner and then people would come out on the course and we finished in this ancient town he's shung ancient town or whatever and that you ran through the alleys and these people come out with walkie talkies are you christy mail and they'd even say my name right like nobody says my last name right right yeah so i was like well this is interesting well meanwhile dj here's the other thing here's the other end of it they're like all right she's through the alleys cue the smoke bombs and then <laughs> I said, Here, get the laser lights going and then the announcer and the music and it was so, it was like, and here you run a hundred miles and your mind's just like super foggy and right. fuzzy. And <laughs> You're funny. delirious. And, show, and I popped out of this. I told this story so many times at Chuck and this weekend. I popped out of the alley and there's this town and you know, the Chinese architecture, it's just beautiful, right? Every little detail was lined in white lights. It's 1130 at night. Wow. And this little ancient town down below is just lit up, lasers going smoke bombs and you run around this like mini like man-made lake. It has a beautiful pagoda out in the middle and you come around the way they're announcing the whole, the whole thing. It was, it was a show. It was unreal. DJ standing there with flowers at the end. It was, it was pretty cool. I, I'm blown away like that. <laughs> I want that to be the chuck nut finish, Chrissy. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> we actually talked about that. So maybe next year we start at 2 PM and then yes. everything can- you got to be in the dark to have laser lights. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see if Smoke we pull bombs. It off. Tourism. Get them on board. Right. <laughs> Let me make a call. We'll make it happen. Uh, I know some people at the Bellingham <laughs> Tourism Office. Uh, well, I, like, I, can't even, I can't even imagine what that felt like for you coming off of 100 miles, which is just – it's nasty. Your brain is in a fog, like you said. You probably haven't been able to eat much by that point because you're so far into it. What was your first thought when you saw it? Did you expect it? 
was it chaos? What was going through your head? Actually, I'm a really good eater. I was eating all the way to the end. But um, the, the, the thought that came through my mind. Now I'm just picturing you like with cheeseburgers, just like, eh, cool smoke oh, bomb. Right. <laughs> it was more like soda crackers, but yeah. it was something. Uh, no, I remember popping out and those people that were all with me, I just go, is this for us? Because <laughs> I honestly had seen laser lights, you know, back when I'd left the uh, last checkpoint, it was, or, you know, somewhere in that last four to five miles. And I was like, well, it could be because the starting line, I don't know if you saw the videos from that. Like it was like uh, NBA, MMA announcer, like, and our first runner, blah, blah, blah. And you had to run up and make this big presentation. Like talk about a little bit of pressure before you start a long race and tons of energy, right? Like that, Mm -hmm you get that surge of adrenaline and then wait, you're supposed to spread that over a hundred miles and the race field just like takes off because they're so pumped up by the music and the right. announcing and the lights and everything. That was cool. Well, for those who are uh, maybe not gathering it by now, Chrissy finished first place. Uh, she crushed it, manages to uh, win the entire thing. I'm, I'm so excited for you, Chrissy. What I'm really excited about is to see what you are, earned as a uh, first place oh. finisher do you do you have it handy you i went up and got it yes I have yes it right. there's a lot of people that a lot are of people. like trophy, oh, trophy. Well, and i th- we had this at the race this weekend and it was so i never would have brought it but deej um, yes. made sure that it was at both wow. the packet pickup and the race after that is yes. gorgeous this is the trophy of extreme land <laughs> can, can you rotate it just a little bit like this way? Yeah, it's full. It's like got depth. Wow. And and now can we have a side by side of that in your chuckanut trophy? <laughs> <laughs> got them both here. Uh huh. So. <laughs> I I that thing is amazing. That trophy is it's incredible, beautiful. It is it is gorgeous. See that one. Yeah, that, that one. one. <laughs> uh, seriously, the uh, the 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 artistry in that is absolutely stunning and beautiful. How the hell did you get it on your plane? Did you have to get its own seat? Is it counted as a pet? What, what counts? I kind of joked about that. DJ took a picture of it, seatbelt into his seat, and he said, I got bumped to the back of the plane so Chrissy could get her trophy home. <laughs> <laughs> Were you able to show like flight attendants and go, listen, I got to bring this on. Look, I did this thing. You know, it wasn't an issue. We had it in Sweet. a check or a carry on bag. It came in, it had a huge box with foam and everything. So we just put that in a extra bag and put it up top, but all the security, there was one, one airport. I think when we left Tianjin and went to Kunming, we had a stopover before we got back to Beijing. Uh, I think that security person, they knew that the race was going on in Tianjin. I'm pretty sure that person like looked back and was like, yeah, you know, they give you the thumbs up and, Congratulations. The other cool thing, they put this around my neck when I finished. Mm. So it was just, uh, some kind of bell. It's got the logo on it, some cool artistry, and then this awesome intricate, like, yeah. oh, wow, fabric. Anyways, so that, that was around my neck. And you know, when you're like, I don't know if you guys feel this, but when I finish 100 miles, my skin hurts, like muscles, everything, eyeballs hurt. And this thing on my neck, I was like, <laughs> Ah, it's really pretty, but ah. <laughs> yeah, I, I can just imagine you just like, I don't want it. <laughs> Being like completely no, rude. That. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's beautiful. Did all the runners get that? I, they, everybody got a finisher's medal. I don't okay. think uh, it was as intricate as, it's I think beautiful. the top got this. Yeah. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful piece of hardware. Um, I, uh, I think we should both just go and win it. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, get some oh yeah. Yeah, trophies. yeah. That'd yeah. be great. Uh, we do have a couple of questions here from the chat room. Let's get to those uh, before we wrap up and go into the post show. Yeah, question from Ben in the chat room. Chrissy, anything interesting about the local Chinese runners, like gear styles, et cetera? So, yeah, you talked about how the, the sport has grown there. What Do they have other traditions or do they have other customs that they, you know, other outfits or gear that they wear? Yeah, ben referenced, all, like, you know, like Europeans love their spandex. Spandex, he said. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Gosh, I um, what comes to mind when that question comes up or, or being asked that is that I think running is such a cool way to communi- communicate and connect with anybody, like no matter where you are in the world. And that language is so foreign. I do speak Spanish, 
but I mean, there's some commonalities that you can kind of make sense of Chinese, Japanese, those languages are so foreign, but yet we can connect and talk with each other because we were all runners. And I actually spent a good chunk of the night and the next morning with two guys and we said maybe three words to each other and we didn't even understand each other. We were giving each other high fives and fist bumps. And one of the words was let's go. Or one of the, I guess, phrases Mm -hmm. was let's go. And we kept each other going. So if we were walking up a hill, we'd each take turns, like getting the other, the other ones going. And the bummer part was, is we didn't all finish together. Mm -hmm. I, kept moving up the field and um, one of them was having a hard time ascending and the other was having a hard time descending by the time we got to about mile 80. But the one I spent the most time with, he came and found me at the finish line and we took a a selfie together. And I mean, we don't, I don't even know his name, but there's just this common language from running and shared it. So I'm not, I didn't really focus on, and I didn't really notice, to be honest, I have noticed the spandex in Europe and the poles in Europe. But I wouldn't say there was anything that stood out. It was just more that we could all connect around the same. That's love really neat. Uh, yeah. I love that. I love that you've been able to experience that too um, multiple times in your in your career. Is this something that you would run again? Do you have plans to run another 100 miler? Or is this the capstone? <laughs> is this the last 100? Um I don't know. There was, it was actually kind of a joke at the finish line, lost in trans, maybe lost in translation a little bit, but they were, you know, somebody would be interviewing me and then it would get translated to me and then I would answer and then it get translated back kind of thing. And somebody asked if, if you will be back next year. And I, in my post 100 mile or really bad humor said, well, am I invited? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how it got translated back, but the race director stepped up, this beautiful woman, beautiful Chinese woman, and she was just, you've brought, she was so sweet, and of course you're invited back, And um, but I've, I've learned you do not make that decision in that moment. <laughs> yeah, unless what, there's tickets for you and your boyfriend, not. right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's, uh, uh, that's amazing. I'm so stoked for you, Chrissy. Uh, like, you're you're such a legend in the sport and and I love following your adventures there's there's a part of me that's like I can't wait to watch Chrissy win this you know like you just sit there and just go she's gonna crush it she's gonna crush it of course yeah you never know but the reality anything can happen uh but the reality is uh when the news came that you you won both Kim and I had a nice celebration around the house we were like yelling and cheering and stuff like that um way to represent the northwest way to represent the U.S. uh you rock and that trophy Rocks too. <laughs> <laughs> Where's it going in your house? Is it like full mantle uh, uh, worthy or are you going to stick it at like in your bedroom so you can look at it or what do you think? So I bought this place two years ago and this is the first place in 18 years of or 18. What am I in? Yeah. 18 years of running these things that I've actually had a place to put trophies. They've Sweet. always been in boxes, which is really sad. So I do have a shelf in my living room that has my Grand Slam trophy, Hurt, Mont Blanc, Hard Rock, UTMF, and this gets to go amongst that. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah, you mentioned Hurt, and I we talked earlier about how this race is hard to train for because you have to train through the winter here in the Northwest. I'm like that in my mind. I was thinking Hurt, same sort of thing where you have to train. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Just the nasty, nasty inclement weather. Uh, any last minute questions uh, from the live chat room? Yeah, I guess. Well, we're still in the main show. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been a couple questions about the gear you used for your race. So what shoes were you running in, et cetera? Oh, awesome. That's great. Um, I, it's a UTMB race, so you have to have the mandatory kit, the waterproof pants, jacket, thermal layer. Um, Patagonia is working on a really cool kit for that specific, the, the sky oh, running type. sweet. So I got to carry a real, it, it sat in a bag the whole time. I, like I told you before, I didn't have to use any of that gear, thankfully. So the um, jacket and pants were pretty small. It's something that's coming out and gloves. Um, shoes, Vask footwear, we've been developing the trail running line for the last three, almost four years now. We launched into REI last year and then they're into specialty run this year. And the trail bender is the one that I had a lot of, input in and also training time and miles in so I a pair of those and I never took them off same pair start to finish um gotta have a trucker hat I took my music 
did not use poles. That was highly recommended. So the other two races started Friday morning, and a lot of people had finished by the time we started Friday night from the shorter race. And they all said, take poles, take poles. And I didn't train with them in this winter. And I'm actually really glad that I did not take them because the understory was so brushy like it is here. Right. That I think I would have been frustrated with them getting caught in the terrain and stuff like in the ferns and all that. So interesting. Yeah. I would have expected like high desert dry stuff, but they're like actual brush and trees and all that sort of thing. Yeah, actually training here was other than the colder temperatures here. Sure. Uh, training here was great. And I got to run, um, also back to training, I guess I got to run Sean O'Brien about five or six weeks out. Kara Henninger's race down in, um, Santa Barbara area. That was a good last, like one hit of sun. It was like 90 degrees Yeah. to like test of the distance. Yeah. Uh, obviously Kira puts on amazing races having lived in SoCal. That was like, we would go yeah. to all of them. It's fantastic. It's so um, awesome. I'm really stoked for you, Chrissy, not only because you were able to nail the travel, you nailed the race, and then you even nailed <laughs> the race back at home that you were directing and your whole crew and everyone that, that put on I that event. Say, yeah, it takes a village. Like, all the people that helped me train, I sent, the, like, these super heartfelt messages back to everybody once I was done with that race because it wasn't just me. I mean, I ran 160K, you know, but, like, to get to that point, it's there's such a team that has to – be a part of that in order to get to that. And then even hearing you say like you had a party around the house, like I swear I feel that energy when I'm racing that there's people checking the, the ticker and seeing where I'm at and sending good vibes. And I think all of that factors in to make a, something like that happen. Absolutely. Well, we're stoked for you, Chrissy. We're huge fans, first and foremost, and uh, we, we think what you're doing is incredible. Um, I can't wait to run Chuck and Out again. Like I wish it was already... <laughs> Yeah, and Kim. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kim and I are going to race. Uh, is that not... <laughs> That'll be my goal to, to beat you next year. Nice, nice. Uh, only if you have giant tiger trophies. Yes. <laughs> and, and smoke bombs. And lasers. <laughs> we got to figure out how to make that. I, I, get, I get ideas. It might happen. <laughs> giant bells. People in the chat room are like, it looks like a giant cat bell. Like, yeah, we need giant cat bells in our races. Um, congratulations, Chrissy. For those who may be watching who uh, want to learn more about you or reach out or find out like how to get your book yes. or Chuck Nut, where can people find you online, Chrissy? Everything. If you know how to spell my name right, then you can pro you can find me. It's uh, Chrissy Mail on all of the things. I'm more of an Instagrammer than anything else. I do love photos, and I think photos share a thousand words. So I'm on there a lot. Um, the Chuck Nut 50K website is chuckanut 50 kracecom my own website's chrissymail.com. I have a link on there. You can order a book directly from me if you want. I have a stack in my garage, and I'm happy to sign them and send them off to people. That's actually a lot of fun. I, lo I love that part. Um, and I love, if I can say, a, if it's a plug about the book or whatever, how many people come up and tell me that my training plans got them from A to Z. Like, and they, uh, there was a bunch of people at Chuck and I, people that I coach, because I do coach as well, but people that... Um, use just the book and they got themselves to the finish line based on a training plan that I put in a book two years ago. And I mean, I still use it for myself. I wrote myself a very similar training plan for this race. And, but the biggest reward is that people will share that with me. I even got a thank you, a handwritten thank you note to say thank you for your book. So all that stuff means the world to me. I love that. That's, that's gotta be one of the most rewarding things. Oh yeah. hundred percent. That's 100%. amazing. Yeah. Uh, uh, client at the finish line, like, I did it. Yeah, I took selfies with all of them. It was, it was really cool. Uh, if you don't uh, you see Chrissy's name there in the lower corner, uh, that's how you spell it. Go to the website. Go to the Instagram. Do whatever you need to do. Follow her. If you have residual questions that maybe mm -hmm. didn't get asked during the main show, obviously reach out. Uh, but get the book. I'm realizing, yeah, buy it directly from Chrissy because I'm sure, one, uh, she gets a bigger per percentage of the book, <laughs> which is one. I mean, honestly, yeah. to support ultra runners, that's how you got to do it. Uh, and possibly getting it signed is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. And maybe Chrissy will even throw in a tiger trophy with with a random book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, maybe a chocolate bar. Uh, no, I'm actually. Stop. I, I promise can't promise anything. I can't. I can't. Uh, regardless, <laughs> if you haven't, check out Chuck Nut. It is a fantastic race. I had a, an amazing time this weekend. It's really great to be able to say I ran an ultra again. Uh, I thought that I wouldn't. And that that 
was really hard over the last year to deal with. And those athletes who deal with injuries and deal with mental stuff, it's it's real. And uh, I'm proof that you can get through that. As far as what's next, I don't know. I'm <laughs> I'm still celebrating uh, the fact that that I was able to do something that I thought about three months ago was impossible. Uh, I think I think it's a pretty pretty red thing. Um, we are going to do a post show with Chrissy. We're going to keep her for another 10, 15 minutes or so. If you are a Patreon supporter, join us over there for that. If you are not a Patreon supporter, consider it. Uh, every month for as little as a buck, you get to join us for all of our post shows with all of our guests. Get to ask those questions that maybe didn't get asked during the main show. It's an op- uh, awesome opportunity to hang out for just a little bit additional time every Monday. And you can come back and watch those archive versions and stuff like that. Sometimes we go for a long time to really... You know, Kim and I sometimes sit here for an hour and continue <laughs> to talk about stuff. But tonight we're going to have Chrissy Mail for for just a little bit. Kim has pulled aside some questions, and we'll even take some uh, additional ones here. Yes. So thank you, Chrissy. We very much appreciate you joining us on tonight's show. Thank you, guys. So you got fun. It. I haven't got to really process all of this, and I wrote that in my Instagram thing. Being able to share stories with you guys tonight would be a part of that process. So cheers to that. Thank you. Oh, you bet. Thanks, Chrissy. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Go, go to her website, follow Chrissy, show her some love. Thank her for being on the show and thank you guys for the continued support. Get out there, train hard, race harder. And of course, party the hardest. We'll see you guys next week, uh, for some more show. I'm trying to think of my, for- if, if I'm forgetting anything, I, I always ask this. I don't think so. Okay. Well, that's it, everyone. <laughs> we'll see you on the next Ginger Runner Live. Uh, some new videos coming out every Friday as well. Go check out the Orcas Island trail running video that yes. we just released last week. It's pretty fun. Ooh. Uh, We'll see you guys in the post-show. Bye. Ginger Runner.